access Google Drive right when you open your Chromebook. You can go into the left-hand corner, and if you've opened Google Drive, it'll appear. If not, you can just type out the word Drive. Another option that you have is that you could just open up Chrome and type in drive.google.com, and that will take you there too. But I do think it's kind of faster or easier to just go in the bottom left-hand corner and type Drive. Okay, so a few things to um, learn about your Google Drive. Up here at the top, you know, if you're not really careful about naming conventions and um, where you're storing things, which I'm highly recommending that you do get really good about folders and stuff in Google Drive. Um, but up here at the top, you have a place to search for any of your documents. So your naming of files and folders becomes really important. So instead of naming it something funny, you've got to really think about naming things that are going to make it easy for you to find them. Additionally, if you remember at least that you made it as a presentation or you made it as a doc, you can then filter your search and help you find those items. Off to the left-hand side, you have all of these navigation items. So um, right now I'm just in my drive, but I have the ability to mark things as a priority item. I can go in and see things that I've shared with other of my peers, maybe a teacher or something. I can see recent items, things that I've most likely looked at within the last few days or something. And then if something is a document that I use all the time, I have the ability to star it or favorite it and it will show up here. Your trash is emptied about every 30 days. So if you delete something on accident, you will always be able to go back and grab it and move it back into your drive if you need to. Up at the top of your drive, you have this area where it shows you all of your recent or suggested items that you might want to, to use or to work on next. Then everything is alphabetical and it starts with folders and then it eventually will get into documents. And I have a lot in my in my Google Drive, but eventually it will get to documents that are outside of folders. You'll also notice that some of my folders have um, different colors attached to them. And you'll also notice sometimes I'll put like a period in front of something or I'll put an emoji in front of something to move it up um, in my uh, alphabetical system in Google Drive. You also have the ability to switch it from the grid view to the list view. So this is grid. I was just looking at it in list view. So grid just shows you larger um, icons, basically. You also in the top left hand corner, right hand corner, sorry, have the ability to open up the information. So you can click on an individual document and it will show you the last time, like let's say you're working on a group project. It will show you, let's see, I'll open this one. It will show you like the last time someone touched it other than you. You also can see activities of different documents within your drive to see again, when someone has maybe looked at something or edited something which I don't have that on very often. I often have that hidden. So what I want you to do first is we're just going to create a few things and test some stuff out. So I'm gonna go up here to new and I'm going to go ahead and create a folder and I'm just gonna call it test folder and then hit the create button. Once it does that, it will highlight that test folder for me um, and I just want to show you when I click on it, when I right click on it, it gives me more options. So if you've never learned how to change colors before, right clicking on a folder will allow you to change the color. So let's go ahead and change our test folder to red. And then I'm going to go ahead and double click on that folder to go into it before I create my document. So what I am suggesting to you is that you should always go into a folder Hopefully it's a folder for a subject area or a teacher. Um, and then it might even have more folders in there for that. So in, for instance, if I had a language arts teacher, I might have a, a language arts teacher folder. You know, just, it will just probably just say language arts. And then within that, I might have a folder for the current essay we're writing or the book I'm reading or something like that. So folders within folders. But I'm gonna go into this test folder first. I'm gonna go back up to new and I'm going to create a Google Doc. Now, because I went to Google Drive first, this document is now in the right folder. So I'm just gonna type this out as test doc. So if I go back, I can see that my test doc is in my test folder. Okay, so to start with, let's go ahead and talk about um, titles. So I am calling this my test doc. 
Um, I'm going to highlight this and I want to play around with the font a little bit. So I can increase my font size. Um, I also can go right next to where it says Arial and click on normal text and I can go here to title. And that will make it nice and big as well. Now, if I would like to play around with fonts, I have a couple of options and then right here at the top, it says more fonts. So if I wanted to, I could go in and find even more fonts that look interesting. So um, right now it's sorting by popularity, but maybe I wanna sh see things that look like handwriting. So for instance, this looks like a fun font. I don't currently have it in my library because it's not blue with a check mark next to it. So if I click that, now it's in my library for Google Docs and slides and everything. I'm just gonna click okay. And now I see that my test doc font has been changed to that Pacifico font. Okay, maybe I want to center my title. So I'm gonna click the center align. And then I'm gonna press return. The next thing that I'd like for you guys to do is to go up to insert and add a table. Let's do a three by two table. Another thing I would like for us to do is to go up into file and we're gonna go into page setup. Now this is where you can turn um, a document from portrait to landscape mode. I think right now we're gonna leave it in portrait, but it's good to know that this is here. And then maybe let's pick a color and change our page color to something. I'm gonna go with blue. Okay, so what I want to do is now in this table, let's put, let's see. I want you to think of your favorite food and we're gonna put a picture, an image here. So I want to maybe search the internet. So I wanna do an image. I wanna go ahead and search the web. I really like pho. So I'm gonna look up that. Now I kind of want it to have a transparent background. So I'm gonna type transparent background and we'll see if we find anything that will work. I'm seeing some clip images. So maybe, okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my cursor in this first table box and we'll see how this looks. I'm going to select this image and I'm going to say insert. Okay, great. So that is actually like a clip art image and it's got a transparent background. I like that. So why don't you guys go ahead and enter in your favorite food into this first table and see if you can find one that has a transparent background for an extra added bonus. Okay, the next thing I wanted to show you is how to change the cells within a table. So the first thing I wanna do is select these two cells and I'm going to go up to format now and go down to table and I'm gonna say merge cells. And now what I've done is I've created a cell that is merged instead of two cells, it's now one. And then if I wanted to color the cell color here, if I go into this paint bucket and I pick a color, it doesn't really matter, you can now see that those cells have been kind of merged or collapsed or grouped together. Okay, so now let's go ahead and talk about um, something called hyperlinks. So um, what I want you to do first is put in a link to your favorite song on YouTube. So I'm just gonna do, sure, Taylor Swift, why not? Okay, so I could go into YouTube and I'm gonna search Taylor Swift, okay. This is the one I want. So I'm gonna grab the hyperlink and I'm going to paste it. Now when I paste a link, if I do not you know, press space or press enter or whatever, then it won't turn into an automatic link out. So we wanna make sure that we, when we're doing a hyperlink that we automatically will do that. But I actually think there's a better, better looking way to do this. So the other option 
is to go ahead and type out like Taylor Swift cardigan and we're gonna highlight that. And then we are going to go up here to what looks like a chain link and we're going to paste and we're going to say apply. Now that infinitely looks better on any kind of document and so I would like for us to start doing that if at all possible. Okay, at this point, I think I'm, I feel pretty good about what we've done so far. So I'm gonna stop the video here. You've learned how to get to Google Drive on your Chromebook, how to create a folder called test, how to color code that folder and maybe even add emojis if you rename the folder, and basic navigation in Google Drive. You've also learned how to create a doc in that test folder, title it test doc, <laughs> change the background color of your document, um, and the title, you even changed the title font and learned how to mess around with the fonts a little bit. How to change the background color of the document, how to change the doc from portrait to landscape. You created a table in your document. It was three by two columns. You inserted a picture of your favorite food. For an extra added bonus, maybe you tried to find an image that had a transparent background. You also learned how to merge two of the cells and fill the color of those merged cells. And we also talked about how to add a hyperlink to your favorite YouTube video or whatever. Now, my whole point in doing that is to show you that there is a lot that you can create in Google Docs. It doesn't have to just be a simple Google Doc with an essay on it. So everything that you see on the screen in front of you are things that we just learned or practiced how to do. Um, so think outside the box when you're working in Google Docs and think about ways that you can actually use all the things that you learned in any of the Google suite of products, actually. All the stuff we learned today, you can do in Google Docs, you can do in Google uh, Slides, and you can do some of the same things in Google Sheets even. So um, as you finish up your document today, go back into Canvas and you're gonna turn in what you finished uh, along with me today.